Right then cat, it's about time you got a stroker update. Before we get into the video, I just want to say some of this was filmed on really shocking camera footage. I had forgotten my GoPro one day, but I'd just done a few little things in the garage that I wanted to show you, so I stuck the camera on my neck and I tried to film it as best I could. Point taken, won't be doing that again in a hurry, but we've included the footage in here just so you can see what I was up to. There you go, watch this space. Right, so here we go guys. So this is what we've, what we've now got. Now, first of all, I've elected to use the lifter trays here and the lifters from the E46. I'll come on to that in just a minute why, but what was going on here right now is the lifter trays are completely empty at the back there and the lifters are all in their own mason jars which are being soaked in diesel. Now I've taken all these lifters apart so they look a little bit like this. So you've got the, the lifter body itself and then you've got the little piston that sits inside. Now I can take this completely apart and I probably will when I get to the point where I want to fully clean it, but at the moment they're just soaking in diesel. Um, I also have a box of them down here on the floor, which are waiting to get soaked. So I'll just pour some diesel into this one. Now diesel is intended to flush out any rubbish that's in there, break down any carbon, but not cause a problem when we come to fill the engine with oil again. So I'll just lid these up so they're nice and safe. Now the main reason I'm using E46 lifters is because one, the cam trays are slightly better. If you can see down in these cam trays here where the actual cams run are beautiful and smooth. There's very, very little scoring in it. The second reason is because the intake camshaft I'm going to be using came from these trays originally anyway. And then the third reason is because on my 323, I actually had two different types of lifter. I had this one on the right and this one on the left. Now the one on the left is the same as all the ones that came out of the E46. The one on the right, is not. The one on the right is actually an older design and I just think well dimensionally they're the same, they perform the same function but if they updated the design then I'd think it's likely this one's probably supposed to be better. So I've elected to use E46 ones for that reason. Now if you're interested how to pull these apart there are things on the internet where they say you can whack them on a table and they'll come apart. I tried to do that, I had no success in that whatsoever. So get yourself a pair of snap ring pliers like these, these were real cheap ones from eBay. Sorry, not snap ring, uh, valve stem pliers. This is what I use to remove all the valve stems with out the cylinder head or just on my right hand side over here. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to get in there, you want to grab the lifter itself, nice and tight, give it a twist and you'll be able to pull the piston out just like that, it's dead easy guys. And then to put them back in, you're just going to be putting them in and pushing them in essentially with a bit of a, a hammer force. Not difficult at all. So we'll just do another one there just to show you. So this is the old style lifter, it's the same difference. Get it in, give it a real good grip with the pliers, give it a twist and pull the bad boy out there. There you go, so there's piston coming out. If you're worried about marring the surface, the actual surface which you're playing with here, if you can see on this one, I've barely left a mark in it, and where it's going to go into the piston body isn't going to be damaged at all, so I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, there you go. Now we have the cylinder head. Now I'm just going to take the phone off the chest here, because I don't really need both hands to show you this, and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with the cylinder head. Here we have my really rather filthy 323 cylinder head, which had done 120,000 miles, something like that. As you can see, hadn't been looked after very well before I got it. It's got a lot of oil varnish in, and it's extremely dirty. But apart from that, it's a working cylinder head, and it's one that I can work on on the bench before I actually get to put it on the car. It's stripped of everything apart from the studs at the moment, the valves, the valve uh, guides, and the exhaust and intake studs I believe. I'm not going to take it down any further than this, any further is really a bit unnecessary. To give you a little idea why I've done what I've done here though, I've taken all the valves out. So here we have the all the engine valves, I'll just lay that down so you can see it. I've got them all identified, so I've got exhaust at the top here, intake at the bottom, both sides just so you can see. Uh, you want to keep them as they came out of the car because they're already kind of lapped into the head as they came out of the car. That being said, I'm going to clean all these up and I'm going to relap them into the head. If you can see the carbon deposits on these are fairly severe, so we want to get all that off. I've had a very, very quick go in the wire wheel with this one and this one. That's an exhaust there and an intake here. They come up real nice, so a little bit of work. We'll get them cleaned up. We'll make sure that the seal between the actual face here, if I can get it to fucking focus, there you go. We'll get that lapped back into the head. In the meantime, I said I was going to do a bit of port work. Now, if you've read online, there's not much to be had from a BMW ported head. 
I might be able to explain why. So this is an M52 head, which was black as night in all of these combustion chambers before I started working on her. I've done very little, I've just got a wire brush on her so far. They really, they really thought about the porting of this head, guys. If you compare this to a Honda head that I'm used to looking at from my old days, one of the things that you notice immediately, if I can get, I might get a bit of flash on here if I can put it on. The actual bowls themselves are very well cut. There's, there's not very much shrouding of the valves around here and around here. So there's not very much work to do in that respect in this area. There's a tiny little casting mark just there, just on that one there. But it's very, very minor. There's a little bit of blending that could be done in these areas here and here and here where the casting's slightly more rough. That You can see the sort of slightly highlighted lines. But by and large, those combustion chambers are pretty good. I'm actually not going to touch those edges. I'm just going to blend in that little sharp edge there because I don't like sharp edges and selling the heads, it's not very cool. And then I'm going to leave the combustion chambers at that because I don't want to mess around with the size of them. So that I'm quite surprised by. The second thing you're going to notice, if you look down at the intake ports, this area here has been blended in already. So you can see that's actually really smooth already. In other words, there's very little work for me to do in there. Likewise, in the exhaust side, although it's completely full of carbon, you'll be able to sort of make out the same sort of principle going on there. It's a very smooth transition between the seat and the actual combustion chamber itself. And then the most surprising thing, if I tip the thing up on its end, is if you look down into the ports, there's the conspicuous absence of the valve guide poking down into the intake port at all. If I flip it back in its top end, you can just about make out those valves are actually recessed into the head and the way the head has been machined overlaps the actual valve itself or the, uh, the valve stem. In other words, there ain't much to do in here. It's pretty good flowing head by the looks of it already and I'm basically just going to tidy it up. So as I said, I'm going to take off the little ridge line of casting that's inside the combustion chambers. I'm going to come into the intake ports and all I'm going to do, if I can sort of get in here and show you, you can just about make out running horizontally down the intake port there a casting line. I'd like to remove a little bit of that if I can do, just to try and aid the flow a tiny touch. If I can get my tool in, I'll go into the bottom of the knife edge, and if I can just get a finger in here, and try and clean up this transition here. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go any further than that because I don't think it needs it. The exhaust side's pretty similar. Uh, the exhaust ports are much smaller, obviously. But there's really very little room to play with. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to have all this skimmed so it's nice and flat and clean. The head will all be completely cleaned up. And I'll take it to the machine shop to do that at the same time that I get the camshafts done. We are coming along. I've not done many updates on the, the stroker, but I am fitting it in around all the other stuff that I do. At this point, I've just done a whole load of work on the M3 again. It's now running really sweet with a new clutch and a new gearbox. If you've not seen a video about that already, that'll be up soon. And we're trying to fit around our living life. So, shit gets pretty busy. <laughs> that being said, as you can see, we've got a long way along with the cylinder head. Once this work is done, it can go to the machine shop and I can forget about that. Then I'm going to rebuild my Vanos unit. Now I've already got that cleaned up. I've got beige and seals for it and I've got a rattle ring kit for it. I'm going to show you how to put that together in another video. So stick with us. It's a slow process. We're plodding along. But we'll get there, man. Um, yeah, what is it now? May. I'm not going to let this one go like the old track car video. I'm going to make sure that this is done. And we're going to do it with the absolute utmost of care. As you can see, I'm not messing about here. I'm trying to make sure that this is basically like a new engine build. As close as I can get it without brand new parts. There you go. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or any comments, any suggestions that I should be doing, stick them down below. If you've done any port work on an M52 head, please let me know. I'd be really interested to see what you found and if you gained anything from it. Other than that, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Pay more out.